The award-winning Modern Times returns for a new season now on BBC Two, starting with a look at life on the club circuit, as manager Tony and his DJs of drum and bass hit the big time. The programme includes strong language and strobe lighting effects. Comrade, I hate to inform you, but the bus is just about to leave. No wonder you ain't fucking getting up drinking this. You drink all that? You drink all that? What are you doing? Delroy! Delroy! Fucking we're missing a plane, get your ass out of bed! Go without you, I'm going to leave you. You laugh, mate, I'm leaving him. Where's Dan? Leave him. Fucking leave him. Where's Conrad? I leave him, leave him. No, I don't even knock for him. Leave him in. Leave him in the other way. Let's go. Tony Fordham manages a team of drum and bass DJs. They're on the brink of international stardom, and tonight they're in Denmark playing at the biggest music festival in the world. At the top of the bill is Tony's partner, LTJ Bookham. To their hardcore fans, these DJs are superstars. To Tony, they are just his boys. It's like um, an old-fashioned family business to a degree where everyone's linked together. It's like a unit and they're not my children because I'm like their age, but to a degree I kind of feel responsible for them and those that don't want to listen, I don't want to manage, mate, and look after. And they can go and earn their money or do whatever they want. And they can become zillionaires or whatever they want to be, but not with me. DJs can also be producers in that they can um, sit at home, knock up a track in a week or whatever, and then go down the uh, go down a music house or the local dub cutting cutting place, get their dub cut onto uh, acetate, which is what we got here, and um, play it out that weekend. That's the fun of it. That's the fun of like the whole thing of making music, the samplers and playing music with decks. You can do what you want to do. You can just do what you want to do. Good-looking records. Hello. 
I'm going mad at the moment. Listen, there is no, listen, let me tell you something, right? That particular company, I am never, ever, I don't care, and I'm not licensing a record, right? I'm not talking to anyone for who even represents anyone to do with that company, mate. I'll tell you, I'm not talking to them, and we are totally out of the deal 100%. And I'm now seeking a new deal. And at the moment, we're not prepared to discuss what we are and aren't doing with his album because we are very, very secretive about it. All I can tell you is you may be very, very surprised who has offered to feature on that album. Right? But I cannot say any more than that. But all I will tell you is the people are legendary status. You better do something like that. When I say gay... Go on then. Yeah. 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 I think it's brilliant because not everyone can play, say, a keyboard or play a guitar or, or play drums or whatever. So in the days when there weren't samplers, you had to have a band and be skilled in a particular instrument to make music. Well, now you don't. Well, that's brilliant. Japan decided that drum and bass is going to happen. The actual top bod of Sony, he personally wants to talk to me and sort this out. After nine months of negotiating with the bastards, maybe we'll actually get a business affairs fucking department in gear and we'll get a fucking deal out of them. But uh, we have to do it because uh, we fucking need uh, to expand around the world. Fucking sell some more records. This is what I imagine Tokyo to be all day long, mate. Oh, mate. That whole fucking building there is just one big sign. That is mad, isn't it? Hey? I've seen a helicopter pad, heli helicopter pad on top of the building. I was saying to him, that's a funny looking satellite. This has got helicopter pad. It's flat. <laughs> Sony has sent two escorts to entertain Tony while he's in town. Like other big record companies, Sony are keen to tie up deals with the new DIY music producers. They're scared of missing out on something that could become very big. Yeah, look at all these. Yeah. Fucking bootlegging my records. Fucking doing mixtapes. to a record shop. How do I take the record shop to court? How much will it cost me? Oh, Sewer, shut them down. How much? Don't know. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. The fucking, they're bootlegging my records. Look. He's buying them from the UK. I don't want to know. I need to know who he's buying them from. I've got a receipt 
and the thing is illegal fucking bootleg tape. Right? So I want to sue him. So I need to know, either he can tell me where he bought them from, and then I'll leave it, and then I'll go and get the geezer in the UK. Fucking bastard. I don't expect anyone to make any money. Fucking joke. Do you know I've got these from all over the world? Do you know, do you know how they get them? Do you know how they get them? They fucking tape them when we do live radio shows, right? Put a track listing in there, right? Get, yeah, right? So if you do like Radio 1 or Kiss, they'll bloody record it. Then, get a magazine, get a photo, bit of shit, put it in there. But that is what stops us selling the genuine fucking bastards. There only ever has been like one major real buzz for me in DJing, and that is hearing what I'll do in the bedroom transform into a big rig, a big system, and being able to, to do that. Um, because you can DJ in the bedroom, that's one thing. You go out and play on like 4,000 rigs, and you've got like monos not working, systems playing up, microphones, his microphone oh, cracking up my ear, and yeah. all kind of business. Then it becomes a totally different ball game. And the buzz for me still is the challenge of trying to go out and do what I do in the bedroom out in a club, actually hearing that loud. <laughs>
of a mainstream of shitty, simplified, fucked up, mangled sounds that come at you like a piece of shit out of a garbage bag. Yes, you have what Bookham is playing, which is clean, fresh, intelligent, thought out breaks, melodies, bass lines and pad patties. I'm sorry, look, 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 look. but we are the underground, look, look. untouchable, good looking. forever. Good looking records. Always getting quoted in, in, in magazines and stuff about how we've sold out and we've gone commercial and all the rest of it. And my argument is, well, let me, I want to see one of those people actually stand up and tell me the same thing when they're the one in a position that can cross their music over to a massive worldwide market and achieve what we're doing. Because in the, the day, any one of those people, I think, are hypocritical because they cannot. What's the point of making music? You might, why not just put it on a tape and play it in your bedroom? Do you know what I mean? Why not, why not just leave it on a tape and play it to yourself and your mum and dad in your bedroom and go, this is fantastic, but it's so cool and credible and trendy and underground, we, I can't let anyone listen to it. It's like, fuck's sake, it's like... But that's the mentality you're fighting all the time. It's 2.30 in the morning and Bookham's on his way from Coventry to Cardiff for the second of three gigs. He spends much of his nights on empty motorways. Faster, faster. Yeah, I'll make a top hurry and all that. Weekends are manic, but the rewards are great. Bookham's fee can be as much as a thousand pounds for two hours at the turntables with his MC. Twenty-three minutes past. Not a bad pit stop. Tonight, Bookham will knock up 800 miles. He needs a good car, but nothing too flash if he's to avoid heat from the police. Have you got an ironing service? An ironing service. Ironing service. No, ironing. No, 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 no. Ironing. You know we use iron clothes, ironing board, iron? To take the creases out of the clothes? I R. No, I R O N I N G. I on ing. On ing. O n i n g. Yeah, right. Have. No, have. Ha, have. You got an I on ing service. Right, can you, is there anyone there who speaks English? <coughs> Pardon? Okay, yeah, one one four one, yeah? Okay, bye. Fucking dingle. I've got a meeting with the head of Sony Music tomorrow. I need clothes and I've got no clothes to wear. <laughs> Don't understand. Yes, I'm sorry, sir. That's cream. No, they're clean, but look, 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 look. How can I go out with a shirt? It's washed and cleaned. Mm -hmm. It just needs ironing. 
It's not your fault, mate. It's not your fault. I'm just mad because fucking I've got enough grip. Okay, the I'm iron is I'm a self to the iron. You're gonna go and iron? Yes. Okay. So this this time once only to the big special service. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you very Namaste. much. Yes. Thank you. Namaste. Tony has meetings for music on television, films and computer games. But the big money is to be made in partnership with Sony, who will sell his records throughout Japan. If the music takes off, both Bookham and Tony could be earning millions. Hi, hi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have you heard of drum and bass? Yeah, I do. You like it? Have you heard of what we do? Uh... We set up a company called Good Looking Music Limited. Mm -hmm. Several of your competitors have contacted us. To put it in a nutshell, there was not a major record company label that didn't make an offer. Everybody keeps offering us sponsorship. Some very, very big companies. Sega are on us like you would believe. Yamaha, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Technic, Panasonic. I see it as promotion, promotion. Okay, towards audience acceptance mm. of the music right. to sell records. Everybody in Hollywood to do with films is talking about doing something with good looking. We're doing two of the um, biggest blockbuster films this year. So, well, David Arnold, for instance, right, who's doing the new Bond film. We're doing TV all the time, radio all the time. We're actually doing it, talking at the moment about doing an opera with four of the biggest Italian opera singers two drum and bass. Do you think we can do some stuff? Do you think people would be interested in this? Is there a possibility, do you think, of um, developing a relationship? To, uh, if you're not enthusiastic, how are they going to be enthusiastic? If you can't, like, show how, like, obsessed you are with it, how do you expect them to be fucking obsessed with it? You've got to encourage them, fucking get them built up and get them all buzzed up and charged up. So they go out there and they go and tell everybody we're doing good looking records and we're, oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, you have the best deal. I know that. Once By the other miles. One, yeah. I know once that. Once the other ones, yeah. I don't other record companies right. uh, knows what we do, yeah. they are absolutely getting mad. Right. Well, let me tell you something. Firstly, and we just wanted to I everybody, don't... make everybody happy. Right, I categorically assure you that. Everyone else, I do not even speak to. Seiko, as far as I am concerned, the deal is now done. Mm -hmm. Very, very, actually, um, good deal for both parties, I think. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Okay. This is the start of a good, long, and uh, mutually beneficial relationship. Fucking. <laughs> Top deal, mate. <my laughs> <man. laughs> Fucking done job. <laughs> Tony's wife, Sonia, is the DJ's agent. She's been organising a tour of North America, but a day before they're due to leave, she's received some bad news. Bookham, whose real name is Daniel Williamson, has problems with his visa. A big problem. Now listen, I'm going to tell you, this morning, right, I got this fax from the Canadian High Commission. Please find and close employment authorisation letters for yourself, Conrad Thompson, Patrick Emery and Conrad Shaffey. Unfortunately, I have not been able to issue Daniel Williamson with an employment authorization at this stage, as I have had to send him a request for further documentation. If you wish to have further information on this case, you should contact Mr. William himself, right? His, his fax does this letter that they've sent to him, and they are and not issuing him an authorization permit because he has driving offences. Yes. Right, everybody give your tickets, give your flight tickets. Yeah, it gives your passports as well. Sonia's taking three DJs and two MCs to Canada.
He's here. It's through. Right. Let's go. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, it's not him. Hmm? Shit. What happened? No, it's not him. Oh. I've got major butterflies in my belly, mate. That's oh. all. Let's jump in large. I've got to get outside. So they could be, they could, they could, yeah, I've just been there, man. No, listen, they could be watching us right now. Yeah, they could. I know. Oh, yeah, they could. Go. Ronnie, the Canadian promoter, is becoming desperate. Yeah. His whole tour rests on Bookham being allowed through passport control. And if they're watching, they see the stress on their faces, they know. Yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. Right, I'm sorry, lads, but we've got to leave him. Let's get all your stuff in my car. You stay here, all of us wait outside. Ronnie has organised this bird to pretend that she's Dan's girlfriend. And she doesn't even know his name. She's never even met him before. She ain't got a photo. And she's got to go into immigration and blag that she knows him and that he's come over here to see her. And all she's got is his name, which she keeps forgetting. His name's Daniel Williamson. It arrives at 3.45 p.m. He was supposed to meet you at home. You went home, he wasn't there. Yeah, and what's his address? 483. Is he four? No, 16. He was supposed to play in Toronto. To complicate matters further, Bookham doesn't know anything about his new girlfriend coming to the rescue. In the cottage. You know his real name? You better write Daniel it all down. Thompson. Williamson. Williamson. Oh, that could have been dangerous. Ooh. Yeah, man. Ooh. I thought it was. Ah! <laughs> you, you Tom. Okay. Six hours later, immigration lets Bookham go, but they don't believe a word of his story. I begged him to look. I wasn't there working when I said, look, shut up. That's why I said, what you deem as to be working, we could be seeing as something else, you know what I mean, and vice versa. So um, oh. you, ha you have to go through the proper like channels and do it the proper way and get the proper permits and shit to do it. Otherwise, you find out what I had to find out and it, it becomes very uncomfortable, do you know what I mean? Right, come on, oh, who's coming in the cab? We've all... That was his big fucking Oi. face to me. Come yeah. on, get in the cab, Jeez, leave now, man. <laughs> He's got into the country by the skin of his teeth, but immigration have warned him that he's not allowed to work. Bookham has no intention of not working, but keeping a low profile while on tour isn't going to be easy. His first engagement is an appearance on Nationwide TV. Hello, everybody. My name is Juliet Bell, and welcome back to the Electric Circus Live. We said to the girl that was interviewing Danny, yeah. whatever you do, do not mention anything anything at all about immigration. Our DJs this evening, LTJ Bookham, as well as Blame, are here in the house. So what's the first what's thing the she fucking asked him was... Immigration. Yeah, about <laughs> immigration. And I could have fucking died, man, I tell you. I could have fucking died. Now, it seems to me that you guys have had a little bit of problems connecting with Canada. What's up with the problems at the border? It's incredible, because I remember a few years ago, we thought that you were going to come and there was a problem there. This time, too, you got to kind of stop there for a while, but you're here. You made it. That's all right. I'm here, so there's no problem. <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> but then I found out that it doesn't only go out in Canada, it goes out in fucking Brazil. Yeah, it does. It goes out everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, all over the world. Before flying to the States to join the tour, Tony stopped off in Hong Kong for more business meetings. Funny to look at 10 or a... No, 50, yeah. Yeah, but have you got a, a, a receipt? Ah, uh, visit, it, low visit. Ah? Uh? Low visit. No. Low, low visit. Low visit. Low? Yeah. She's saying fucking low or... I need a receipt for the um, tax man. Um, change? No. Change? Oh. Change? The package, yeah. Huh? About the package, yeah. With package. the package. Package, five dollar for one. Five dollar for one package. Ah uh, yes. Each package is five dollar. Yes. 
Additional charges, baggage per piece, except light personal hand baggage which can be placed inside a vehicle on an animal bird. Fucking oh, yes. with the twenty. Huh? With the twenty. Four four package. Four packages, eh? Yeah. Fuck it. And I can have a receipt then? No, 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 no. No? No, 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 no. No. Okay. Alright. Well, I'll see you what first if, if that ain't being ripped off, I don't know what is, I'll tell you. Who's watching that? Uh, trolley? Huh? Luggage trolley? Sounds of a logical progression. As we push the door open with the rhythmatical key. To elevate your thoughts is our intention. Showing you where you gotta be Enhance your musical extensions Let the music enhance and go your nervous system Arms start twitching, suddenly you're twisted Legs start sliding across the floor like ice skates We stink that your thoughts take the bait It's inevitable, possession eminent Feelings relevant, beats fatter than elephant As I represent over the deep and meaningful Musical, spiritual, can you hear it? All streets cascade over mine like a waterfall a low budget tour means a punishing schedule. They're working by night, traveling by day, so there's little time for sleep. Seven gigs in a week and 10,000 miles of planes and trains is taking its toll. I've set my mic up right, I've been waiting for the secondary mixer, which nobody can be bothered to talk to. Well, alright, I'm gonna go find the sound guy, I'm gonna bring him in here, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna show what you want. And if it can be done, we'll do it. If it can, just send us an email. I've already spoken to Andy. If it can be done, okay, just get to it. We take care of it, alright? Jeff, they can't get a mixer here. We've already been through this this afternoon. They cannot get a mixer here. I've already had it out with them on the phone this afternoon. They cannot get a mixer here. And it's as simple as that. That's why I gave up. Hey, I'm going to show you something. That's a stone cold lie. Because I spoke to the sound engineer out there earlier on. He goes, Do you want your head mashing? I've got a lie. Do you want your head mashing against that thing? Conrad. Later on, I'm going to get down and go, Shut up, I'm mixing. Shut up, I'm mixing. Ray, shut up, I'm mixing. They all know the curve, Conrad. If you'd wake up for one second, you'd listen to what was happening around you, man. It's like it's like Groundhog Day. It's like it's like it's like Groundhog Day, Sonia. I've heard it about seven times. Yeah. But do I see a result? How many times do I hear it off your mouth? Sonia's approaching the American border, where she'll finish her leg of the tour. She's paranoid that the boys in the car behind might be carrying marijuana. What we're going to say if they search the boot? If they wait? If they search the boot. We should stop and look in their record boxes and make sure there's nothing in there. We've already done that. Have they? Well, we should maybe just double check. Yeah. They would hate to... Cause we I mean, if they take the car and you never get it back, <laughs> they find any drugs in it. And then we all get to go to jail. Great. <laughs> Lovely. Basically, they're going to ask you where you're from. And other than that, don't say anything. The group has arranged to meet Sonia at a cafe across the border. But one hour later, the boys haven't turned up. They're not here. I've got a bad feeling that they're not coming across. Just don't think they've got over, that's all. It's taking too long, man. It didn't take us that long, and we waited behind people to get through. I've just got a bad feeling. Me 
miserable, fucking inconsiderate bastards. Right, so you couldn't really get here and then tell us that you wanted to go shopping. You couldn't even... No, because we had to go back there. Right, you couldn't even page Diane. I mean, we got a little, because we knew you'd be waiting. Well, so you did know we'd be waiting. We told you, like, outside Sonia, the hotel. Sonia, I said, already said to you, when we get there's the shop's warehouse thing on the border, didn't I? I told yeah, you, I've been told you about five times. Yeah, but the arrangement was that we meet here. Yeah, we met meeting there. Yeah. And you've had us sat here an hour wondering what the fucking hell's happening to you. We was on air, we was on about driving back. Because we thought they weren't going to let you in. Fucking walk all over her. And then, then, then they're having massive rows, which get blown totally out of proportion, and major drastic measures at them. Right, because instead of just having a nipple row, it all gets like, because it brews and brews and brews, because they just walk all over her. So how do your tactics differ from hers? Huh? How do your tactics differ from hers? I'm five stone heavier than all of them. With ten days and eight cities to go, Tony's arrived to crack the whip. The boys are running out of steam, especially the MCs, Delroy and Conrad, who are beginning to slip up on the job. <laughs> well, you've got to hear this one. I want you all to listen. You witnessed this, right? Well, well, I just said to him, right? I said to him, he's been sleeping. I said, you just missed two calls to get the mixer for tonight, right? Hello. Right? I said, well, you're sleeping your fat ass, right? So he's gone, yeah. So I said, right, so say tonight, I says to him, if there's not a mixer properly to perform on, whose fault is it? Mm. Right? I just want you to confess. Confess? Yeah. To well, what? whose fault is it then? Tonight, New York is there, right? Yeah. Right, Del, I need you to sit down now and take it on the chin, son. Right. It's your fault now there's no live mixer for tonight. You've got to see this. This is, this is worse than a fish on a hook, mate. Here, I'll go on. Look, no, it's not me, it's him. It's my fault. It is your fault. Yeah, it's my fault. Yeah, OK, right, but who is your boss? My boss? Yeah. No, you're more like lower down boss. <laughs> Very low down, in <laughs> fact. No, lower than that, like fucking right at mercy at the bottom. Or who oh, boss? flame. No, him. Don't go to sleep, comrade, you're getting it. I'm up, guys, so I'm listening to you. So who's look at you, it? does it? So who's so fault I'm is it? Look at you. So now you've passed so it to poor little it's girl, right? Oh, it's not good enough, Conrad. I don't want you to know that there's no live mixer tonight. Disciplinary measures are going to have to be enforced. And I'm not going to enjoy it. You know that. Space cadets, fucking space cadets, a lot of them. I can watch the bastards see what they're doing on video, <laughs> and I can hear them very low. Wicked. You can fall asleep in here too. And I can't believe Del is actually moving. He's gone from that side to that side twice already. They get here tonight and go, we need a battery for the mic. That'd be like saying, Blaine, where's your records? Old tongue, didn't you bring them for me? I didn't know I had to bring records with me. The same fucking thing, innit, you know what I mean? I'll give up with him, so I swear to give up. Unemployment's rife for good looking, mate. Rife. You're looking at a changed man. Cracking the whip. Whip's, already whip's already cracked, mate. Believe. The whip's already cracked. Whip's already been struck. So I believe you see, Del, but right, in a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye, you see, right? Yeah. When man draws blood, they must drink well. It's probably their last yeah, drink. Yeah, you come out of all this, but you're just a big softy, mate. A big cuddly teddy, teddy bear. OK, oi, oi, oi. Del, but am I a teddy bear at the moment? <laughs> no. The problem is with you lot, 
you don't speak back to him. I do. They don't. They really don't matter. Like you're like this, you're giving it all that, and they're all like that. <laughs> Especially Del. Del, you should just go, shut it, or I'll do ya. Yeah. And that'll sort all your problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a right result, we've lost comrade. <laughs> he's got no money, no phone numbers, he don't know where he's going. No. How? Left him on the plane asleep. I got on the plane, there's all these three, and he goes to me, where's comrade? And I'm going, what do you mean where's comrade? He's sitting here already with you. No, he must be still asleep on the other plane. So he's gone to, um, okay, just Atlanta or somewhere. No, Orlando he's gone, right? So what she said to me was, this is, the, this is a crucifying hour, right? He gets to Orlando, let's get on a return plane, come back to Kansas, then get on another plane to come here. He comes here tonight, 11.30, which means he's got about 15 minutes to get, no, he ain't got, no, he's got to come straight from here to perform. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Leave him. <laughs> I think it's great. It's one of the, it's, this is the highlight for me of the whole tour, this, I'll tell you. The absolute epitome of the tour. I, I can't work out how nobody woke me up or nobody saw me or not any of our lot, but just someone off the plane just thought, well, that's the same group of people. Yeah, I better give them a nudge and say, oh, yeah, mate, your mate's living. Because when I spoke to Dan, he said, like, he literally had to, he got up and had to run off the plane. They had five minutes to get to the next gate, and by the time he got to the next gate, he didn't even, he didn't see Tony or Blame or Dell or any of them. He just got to the next plane. So everybody was like on their own mission to get off that plane, and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Fucking hell, mate. Yeah, mate, done my own little tour. Good looking, bollocks. <laughs> MC Conrad tour. <laughs> oh, mate. Hey, Dan. Dan. Dan, have you heard of Air Thompson? The new jet, jet, jet line starting up. <laughs> Tower control to Thompson. What are you receiving? You think out. you're going direct, but you're not. Well, you can enjoy yeah, the comfort of Thompson Air. <laughs> you go to Manchester. Right, Moscow. <laughs> bothered anymore with people that can't be bothered themselves. It's not a freeloader situation. If you can't pull your weight, it's just natural selection. You've got to go, haven't it? It's a shame, really, because the fun to a degree is not there as much as it was. When it was hard and you were trying and you actually used to have a lot more fun, now it's just fucking hard work, mate. I remember going to the clubs and thinking, like this, fucking, I hope someone's going to come tonight, and all of a sudden all these people used to come used to be, like, in utopia. And, like, now, it's like... I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong, I appreciate the people that go and why they enjoy it and everything else, but I ain't a DJ, I'm, I'm not into fucking clubs and all the stuff that goes with them. I'm quite happy walking my dog, mate. And we Dutch. Kiss. Kiss. Give, leave, leave. No. 
Leave it. Leave Duchess. Conrad, up until the end of August, you're on probation. And you'll receive all this in writing. But I will be watching you, and my eyes will be so far up your fucking anal canal, you will not know which way to turn. Tony's had an idea. He has a mate who would make the perfect tour manager. Busy, very, very busy. They've all had it too much, too quick, and far too easy. And it's been given to on a plate. And now we're going to find out who exactly fucking wants the cake and who don't. And there's a few that ain't going to get to eat the cake. <laughs> Can I borrow you for a minute? Hang on a second, mate. No, this comes first. <laughs> now, your job, Mickey, on this tour as tour manager is to kick some fucking ass. We're going to have to write this down, actually. Yeah, oh, I'll write it all down. You will have a full itinerary, so, like, you mm. get, you know. So there's six of us travelling around? Yes. Yeah. But basically, you've got to make sure that they don't oversleep, that they don't take the piss, yeah. that they get there on time. You will have a DJ lineup that tells you what time LTJ Bookham is got to be at the it's event. It's the same group of men throughout the whole tour, yeah. is it? They're yes. Right, so that's right. Really simple. Now, I can give you an itinerary of all that, but mm. what I won't give you an itinerary of mm -hmm. is the fact that they're going to get you stunned, they're going to get you peeled up to fuck, no, they're going to get you pissed as a fart, mm. anything to get rid of you. more Mr Nice Guy mate, that's why I've got this tour manager and all that mate, I ain't going on tour and him lot all fucking about him and let, they can uh, deal with him. Room service. country plagued by anarchy, 